My dear friends in Christ, the second talk in this day of recollection is entitled Knowledge of Self. Makes us ask ourselves the question, who am I? Are we what we know? Are we who we know? Are we what we have? So many people in the world identify themselves with what they have and what they accomplish or have accomplished or where they've been or who they know. In this step of total consecration, in preparation for total consecration to Jesus through Mary, St. Louis Mina Montfort lays down the way that we ought to get a true knowledge of ourselves. Underlines, among other points, four main points. Humility, obedience, contrition, and detachment. We have heard in some of our talks today, or during this day of recollection, but also during this conference, about humility. How humility is the absolute opposition to the devil. It's central for spiritual success, spiritual development. The foundation of all the virtues. Well, what is humility? People often have a wrong definition of humility. They usually take upon themselves to define it in a negative manner. A degradation of self to no purpose. Humility, in short, is truth. What is? Not subjective truth but objective truth. So who am I? Objectively. Objectively, I am a creature composed of body and soul. Endowed by God with faculties that are attributed to the spiritual and to the physical. What are faculties? Abilities. What are the faculties of the body? Very simple. Sight, smell, taste, hear, touch. Five, the five senses. What are the faculties of the soul? Intellect and free will. But, as wonderful as these these faculties are, I must also remember that they are not, as God first intended, when he gave them to Adam and Eve. I have a fallen human nature. Scripture states it so well when we read about the warfare that takes place within ourselves. The flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit is against the flesh. There's a war. Things are out of order. 
on account of our first parents and what we have inherited, complicated on account of us giving in to our fallen human nature and following self. This is the truth of the matter. We should be reminded of this every time we pass a cemetery, every time we go to a funeral. We are not the way we are meant to be here and now. When God made man, do you think God made man to die? No. Death is the result of sin. On account of the disobedience, it's a punishment. And it's a reminder to us that things are not in the right and proper order. The second step, obedience. Obedience means to be subject to or in accordance with. If we are to understand that we have a fallen human nature, then we are to understand also that we must conform. We have to use our intellect our higher faculty to seek out the truth and our free will we must use to choose to follow the truth. We will get into obedience a little more later. The next step, contrition and examination. (coughs) The imitation of Christ reads, oftentimes we are quite unconscious on how blind we are. It also states, think often of your final end and you shall seldom sin. Examine ourselves. Who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? And what am I doing to get there? These three questions, which the late Abbot Leonard Giardini used to talk about, are three questions I think we should often ask ourselves. For we should often examine ourselves, not as we think of ourselves, but the reality of who we really are, what we have really done, what we are all about. (coughs) And finally, detachment. Detachment comes from the French. It means to disconnect. How does this work with self? Well, we have to let go of self. Self Self-will. Self-want. Self-promotion. Selfishness. The definition in the dictionary for detachment is the state of being objective. Not subjective. When something subjective is personal feeling, taste, opinions, I think, I want, I need.
Detachment is letting go of self. In order for us to grab a hold of something greater. I think one of the best thoughts in considering detachment is found in the narrative of the gospel of St. John the Baptist who have been preaching and people have been following him and listening to him and Christ comes into the picture And St. John the Baptist turns to his disciples, faithful, and says to them, I must decrease, he must increase. The word in Latin for I is ego. Of course, we can find relationship in a few English words like egotistical an egomaniac, egocentric. This is a great detriment to spiritual progress. So now that we have taken a look at who we are, some objective truths, I am composition, a creature, composed of body and soul with faculties, albeit in an imperfect state. Now, we have to, in recognizing that things are out of order, strive to put them into proper order. Who am I? I remember reading C.S. Lewis and came upon a point which made me at first take a second glance and read it again. He wrote, and I quote, I do not have a soul. I am a soul and have a body. Do you see, we oftentimes think, oh, I have to save my soul. No, you are the soul. Your body's second. The most important thing about you is your soul. In philosophy, the soul is called the life principle. Let's take a look at a funeral. The body is rolled into church. We say the man is dead. Oftentimes we hear people whisper, oh, he is in a better place. Is he? But his body's there. And the question comes up, well, where is his soul? Well, as Catholics, of course, we are reminded when the priests dons on the black vestments and the casket is covered in black, not only because we mourn the loss of a loved one, but because we are blinded to where they have ended up in eternity. It's not for us to know. We are not the judge. Of course, We are encouraged to pray for the dead that they may be released from their sins. And so we do as Catholics. But the object of reality of what is before us, we need to underline to ourselves. The body is there. The soul is before his judge. Or in his place of reward or his place of punishment, whether it be 
purifying punishment or eternal. But it should be a reminder to each and every one of us that things are out of order with ourselves. I don't have a soul. I am a soul. And I need to do everything to make, make sure first things are first. When God created man, he said, let us make man in our own image and likeness. In that quote from scripture, we have our first glimpse, the eternal being what we know as the Holy Trinity, using the plural, let us. Of course, only when Christ came, did he give us greater explanation about the Trinity. But if we are made in the image and likeness of God, then let us take a look at what we know about God. God is Father, Son, and Spirit. The Father begets the Son, and the Father and Son beget the Spirit. The Father's, whose first thought was a perfect thought, was personified as our thoughts are shared with words. It's personified by what we know as the Word. That's why we read in the last Gospel of Mass, the Word was made flesh. And there was a perfect love between the Father and the Word also known as the Son, and the Son to the Father. Eternal and always. Which is personified as the spirit of love and truth. And these three are one. Individual persons, but one God. How are we made in the image and likeness of God? Well, we have to see somehow that Trinity in us, and we do. We have the body, the life principle. Of course, imperfect, because we are not God, just the image, a hint, if you will, of God. But that's only two, body and soul. The soul is not complete unless it has a life principle of its own. And that life principle, my dear friends in Christ, is what we know as the sanctifying grace. Also, the same spirit of love and truth. God, one with us. If, I thought it was interesting yesterday, when our talker, our speakers, pardon me, for our final conference was talking about the word if, That's a funny little word, if. You know what? If means choice, doesn't it? Our Lord uses this word we see in Scripture. If you love me, if you want to be my disciples, if we want to be complete, then we must make room for something greater than ourselves 
And in order to do that, we must detach. We must let go. We must go down a path. This is where we get back to that idea of obedience. We live in a day and age where we have the satanic philosophy predominant. What is it that the Satanists Satanists say? Is there a whole mode of operation? Do what you will is the whole of the law. This is an absolute opposition to what Christ says. If we want to be his disciple, deny yourself, take up your cross, follow me. What is it that we see when we look at Christ and strive to follow him? Detachment. St. Paul writes it very well where he says, He, being God, did not see it something to be clung to, but became obedient even to the death of the cross. Why? Well, not because he needed to, but he chose to because of the great love that he has for you and me. Now, what are we willing to sacrifice It rolls off the tongue very simply and easily enough where it says, deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. If you love me, keep my commandments and my father will love you and we will come to you and make our abode in you. We will come to you and make you that image of us. It's another thing to do. Taking up our cross takes an obedience. What is our cross? We can have sicknesses, we can have ailments, but our greatest cross is our daily duty. Our vocation. What God what God has called us to, be it religious, married, single, layperson. We are all called to different vocations in this world, but we're all called to the same vocation where it concerns our purpose. We are meant to be saints. That's why God created us. We learned this. Theology 101, second grade. Why did God make you? God made me to show forth his goodness and to be forever happy with him in heaven. I can't show forth his goodness when I'm showing forth my own goodness. Know, my dear friends in Christ, who I am in my examination of self. I am weak of and by myself. But the truth of the matter is I do not need to be of and by myself. Christ says, come to me, all you that labor and are burdened, and I will refresh you. The truth, I am a sinner. We need to recognize the fact. Scripture says the just man falls seven times a day. I often think of this and ask myself, well, where does that leave me? Because I fall way more than that, I'm sure. But in recognizing myself as a sinner, I then can recognize Christ as Savior. As Redeemer, I must recognize myself as a sheep. 
It is only then that I can say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not walk. I must recognize myself and choose to be a disciple. And then I know what I must do. I must listen and have the discipline enough to follow the master, the teacher. That's, what, that's the word disciple. The word discipline comes from that word. It means I control myself. I don't let my emotions go this way and that way and my whims and my wants. No. I make sure that he is the purpose and the reason for my day. I must admit that I am a potential saint. We are reminded of this at every Mass when we receive our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. For that is what a saint is. A saint is one with God. If we don't remind ourselves and understand the mystery that we receive when we receive Holy Communion, Holy Mother of the Church endeavors to remind us when we read the last Gospel of Mass. Giving us the warning first. He was in the world. The world was made by him. And the world received him not. He came unto his own. And his own did not know him. But to as many as receive him, he gives them power to become sons of God. True knowledge of self we have that potential. Gospel truth. I ran across a love poem. And I couldn't help but make it spiritual. Many love poems are pretty shallow, if you ask me. You know, roses are red, violets are blue, etc. But this one caught my attention. Especially as I was able to attribute it to our Lord. It reads, softly my thoughts whispered, invisible words. My mind was a calm chaos. I wanted to find myself, and I did when I found you. He completes us. Do not be ashamed of the need you have of him as much or as you ought to recognize the love that he has for you and comes to you to complete you, to perfect you, to bring us to our true home with him in heaven. Examine yourself, not in comparison to others, 
or of a checklist of things that we have been guilty of or things that we have done that were good, but examine yourself in comparison to him. When you're sorry for your sins, be sorry to him for offending him. When you practice virtue, do it for him. Live for him. Be with him. Die with him. So that you may be forever and ever with him in heaven.